seems legit. Hey Legitimates, welcome back to my channel. Today I am using some of the pre-order inklings in the Kraken fabric to make this absolutely adorable pencil case for a ring binder. Uh, we are making the pattern up as we go throughout this video, so you will see all measurements, you don't need to pay for a pattern, and you get this magnificent little pencil case. So let's get started. So I have my hardware, which is a zip and two grommets. You don't have to do grommets, you can put little loops in instead if you want to, but I like the grommet thing, it's my jam. We have, um, what are they called, zipper tabs. So mine are two inches by one and a quarter. And I'm pretty much just making this up as I go, by the way. And then we have, I'm going to line it. So we've got the outside, which is this fabulous, fabulous print here. And then I'm just doing waterproof canvas for the lining because I'm lazy and it's easy and I don't have to interface it. Uh, so on the back of this, I do have a normal interfacing. So I use a Violin 1050F, which I call my hefty, which is a non-woven thicker interfacing. And you'll need some zipper tape. Now this, so this one is 12 inches by 7 inches and this one is 12 inches by 8 inches. So one inch bigger, same height. Important. And then the linings are the same as well. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is work out how much of the zipper tape we need. I'm going to go from about here to about here and then I'm going to tell you what that is because we're making this up as we go. So it is 10 inches. We're going to do 10 inches of zipper tape. Sometimes it's just fun to make fun things and everybody needs a pencil case. Kids, adults, whoever has got a binder. So this is a binder one. I've bought a binder. We're going to do other things with the binder too. I have plans. But for now. 10 inches of zipper tape. We are now going to put the zippers on. We're going to do that now because we don't want to forget. I have forgotten in the past. It's not ideal. So, one side, other side. I just crack my zip a little bit. And then we're going to fold it around my finger and pull. The zipper is on. So we're going to take one of these right sides up and then zipper right sides up. And then we're going to take one of the tabs. Now, I didn't interface these, but you can if you want to. We're not going to see a whole lot of it, so I didn't really care. And I'm going to do two and a half on my stitch length, and we're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And then, because I'm feeling fancy, we're going to do chain stitching. So I'm going to put lining right sides up, zipper right sides up, Exterior right sides down to make a zipper sandwich. It's essentially what it is. A zipper sandwich. Like this. Stitch, back stitch, stitch over, back stitch. Now to make it pretty, you don't have to do this next bit, but I'm going to. I'm going to pull both edges back and then top stitch over the whole thing. And then I'm going to grab this one. We're just going to keep chain stitching. All right, top stitch over. This will just hold it there. It'll make it nicer. But you don't have to top stitch, but I do recommend it. So now we've got this, and this should now be longer slightly than our piece. You always want it slightly longer. It's better to have it too long than too short. So I'm going to grab my print, and I'm going to lay it the way I want it to be. So this side is where my grommets will be to attach to the binder. So then this, we're going to flip it over this way and put it down here. Now I'm just going to have the same amount of excess hanging off the end. I mean, you can cut them so they're perfectly matched, but honestly this way is easier for me and so that's what I'm doing. You can do whatever you like. So we're making sure the zipper's facing down and I want to make sure that the zipper's going to shut at the top. So that's it. Other thing I've done, the zipper's going to finish up here. Things to think about. But to the top is where I want it. So this is the smaller piece, but you can do the other piece first. It actually doesn't matter. They're all going to be joined together in a minute. Then we're going to put this one right sides down and make a sandwich. Now, if this is um, directional, you want to make sure that this is the top, the same as this one. 
I like using waterproof canvas in zipper pockets because they're easy to clean. You can wipe the ink off most of the time. I just like it. So, with that being said, we're going to stitch, back stitch when we get onto the actual fabric. And then I'm just going to go across here. And when I get to the zipper pull, I'm going to lift up the presser foot and zip it to where I've already stitched. Now it won't get in my way anymore. And just continue along. So the edge of my presser foot here is running along the edge of the zipper tape. You can put on a zipper foot if you prefer less zipper tape showing. Also an option. Okay, so now I've got this. I am going to fold this back and we are just going to top stitch the outside. I don't want to do the inside because I don't want to wreck anything. Okay, so I'm going to stitch, back stitch. I'm not doing a longer stitch length for this. It is just a pencil case. And it will look fine with just a normal stitch length. If you wanted to, you could do a, stitch, a longer one, but you would want to do the longer one on the zipper tab so that everything's matching. Just a thought for you. I like matching. I just assume everybody likes matching like I do. Okay. So that's one side done. Now I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut off the excess of my zipper tabs because we don't need it there anymore. So now I can take this and again I want it all facing the right way so we're going to put this together. Do it at each end where it all lines up. Now everything else in the middle should just join like that. And I'm going to grab one of these and we're going to join it on. So again, if this is directional, you need to do it directional. Stitch, back stitch. And off we go. I'm actually going to zip this down a little bit because it's a little bit too high to where I'm starting. So move it down like that. Needle down, lift up the presser foot. I have a knee lift if you're wondering how I do this. If you're new here, knee lifts are the best thing in the freaking universe. It's like having an extra hand to sew with. You want to back stitch at the end as well. We're going to trim that off. And then we're going to fold this back and top stitch just the outside. If we top stitch both, you're going to get like a weird bit at the side, and I don't want that. So just fold it over. Make sure that the zipper doesn't um, get in the way. It has been known to happen. And the reason we're doing it this way is so that the zipper's not right on the edge, it'll be on the front. So now we just bring these two edges up together and I'm going to clip it so it doesn't shift because it's probably going to try. All right, we're also going to come down the side here and it's going to be uneven so we don't don't even think about it it will just be uneven. Same with this side. I'm just going to stitch. Do I want to stitch all the way around? I don't think that's going to work. Um, I'm just thinking, if I pull this back... If we turn it three, you see the raw edge, and I don't want to. So I'm just going to stitch from on the where the zip is. We're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Turn. 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 
stuff there. And I'm going to open it and I'm just going to make sure I do the other side right. Because I'm literally making these up as I go. I have no plans. I know what I'm trying to achieve and sometimes you just have to do it to achieve it. So the idea is... that the lining will follow where the bag is. So you should have like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it back through. It's all working out fine. I was just double checking. Alright, so let's just turn it back through. So now what I want to do is I want to bring these edges together and stitch to here. It's just sitting weird at the moment, but bear with me, alright? Have faith in my skills. So I'm just going to stitch the edges up to, but not over, that bit there. Stitch, back stitch, and I'm not closing the bottom so that I can turn it through there because it won't matter in a minute. Okay, so that's that one and that one's stitched. I do just need to stitch this little tiny bit here closed. So I'm going to go over, stitch. That's where I ended earlier. So you want to make sure that from this side you stitch all the way over to the edge of the fold. And then we just don't worry about that bit. Now if my calculations are correct, we should be able to just turn this through and the lining will go where it's told. with no weird bits, which is the more important part. The only potential place we might have a weird bit is here. But so far so good. I'm making sure I push that corner all the way out. And then push this, the lining down. And we're just leaving the whole bottom open. So when we zip it up, the zipper should be on the edge like this. Because we did that extra inch. So see how I've got a little bit at the top? So I'm going to iron this flat to make sure I pull out this corner with my trusty sew all. Because I want it to sit nicely. And then I'm just going to iron it all flat and then we'll come back and just finish off. Right, so we're all ironed and beautiful. What I do want to do is just cut off a little bit of this excess because we're not stitching it. Um, we can just cut off like a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean like half an inch. Just so that when we put this in, it's not smashing against this raw edge. Now don't worry about having a raw edge there, I have a plan for that too. In my brain this is working out beautifully so far. So, this is where it's going to sit and we want to make sure that the lining is sitting as flat as possible. So you want to push it towards the end, we just don't have to stitch it because what we're going to do is grab a ruler and a pen and I'm going to measure a one inch line. So we're just going to go across here with something erasable. This will remove because it is a friction pen. But you can also use a Chaco pen or whatever you want. So we're now just going to stitch this line across making sure... 
oh sorry I've got the hiccups making sure that everything is flat on the inside okay so this will now seal off those ends and over we go so you want to get right on that line and so now from the inside it's all sealed up all right so if we open this and i've got the zipper right on the edge but it's just on the top we're all sealed up now we don't have to worry about anything escaping and so now we just need to place our rings now i went and bought this for a dollar 75 at kmart so that i can line it up exactly where i want it so you want it in the middle of everywhere like this you could make it a little bit bigger if you wanted to um but it doesn't need to be the full full width and i didn't want it too wide either the point is that you'll like everything else will sit underneath and this will be on top so with my erasable pen i'm literally just going to line it up in the center here and this is how i'm going to work out the markings so here and here because i've got a two ring binder if you've got a three ring binder obviously it's different Four rings will have these two in the same spot, but and two more. So it depends on what binder you've got. I will tell you these measurements though, since we're making it up as we go. So it is four and an eighth inch from the edges. Maybe it's about four. Oh, well, let's do it from the center. We could do it that way too. So there's the center. It is one and a half inches from the center. Or is it one and five eighths? Oh, it's one and five eighths inch from the center. Okay, so either or for that, or you could just measure it against your binder like I did. That'll be fine too. You can use any size ring. Um, I'm using half inch because that's what I have a lot of. But you could use like little six mil ones. I do actually have them. Or you could use your 10 mil ones. If you bought all those fun, colorful 10 mil ones from when I was doing them, this would be a great use for them right now. Do 10 mil bright green ones that would look amazing. You could also get colored zippers. This would be like a fun little gift for children. You could put their names on it. You do all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, so I've now got my two bits in. We're going to punch the holes through the center of the line that we drew. I just put my whole weight on it and it tends to punch its hole all by itself. Right there and line it up. Lean on it until it makes that noise. It didn't quite cut through. It only cut half because it's being a jerk. It definitely cuts holes better through vinyl than fabric, but it did get through all the layers. So that's good. And then I'm just going to put my ring on the outside. We're going to put our gasket part on the bottom. Now it's got like a ripple in it. You want it to be a mountain, not a cave. That is the best way to describe it. Most people would think you do it the other way, but that's not actually true. Because if, it, if it's up like that, the whole point is that it's gonna hold the fabric so that it won't come out and you know, if you do them the other way, the fabric comes out from under the gasket on the back. So it's gotta be a mountain. And then that's it. Quick, simple, and freaking amazing. Uh, in she goes. Perfect. The zipper's on the top so that you can see it. If you wanted to, you could top stitch around all the edges. Um, I think that turned out fantastic. And it's just on top instead of on the edge. It just I think that just makes it a little bit easier. But again, you don't have to do it that way. But this is my fabulous version.
There you go, guys. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.